Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number two from the October 2023 Pure Mathematics P3 paper from LXL International A Level. And this question is about functions. And it says the function f is defined by f of x equals x plus 3 over x minus 4. And x is an element of the real numbers. And x is not equal to 4. x cannot equal 4. And we can see the reason why x cannot equal 4 because it will cause the denominator to become 0, which will make this undefined. So we can say that this, this will have an asymptote, a vertical asymptote, when x equals 4. You can never touch that. Um, the line x equals 4. So part A says find f of f6. That means we've got to find what f6 is and then put that inside the function f. That's what it means. Right? So what is f6? What is f6? It's when we replace the x in this function with 6. Simple as that. Okay, so we take x and replace it with 6. We have 6 plus 3 over 6 minus 4. That gives us f and we have 9 over 2. So now what we have to do is replace the x in this function with 9 over 2. So f6 is equal to 9 over 2. And we place the x now with 9 over 2. So we have f 9 over 2, which is going to be... 9 over 2 plus 3 divided by, I'll write it like this, and 9 over 2 minus 4. Okay, I've just written that as division. Okay, so 9 over 2 plus 3 is going to be 9 over 2 plus 6 over 2 divided by 9 over 2 minus 4 is 9 over 2 minus 8 over 2. Wrote them as equivalent fractions. That's going to be 15 divided by 2 divided by 1 over 2, which is 15 over 2 times 2 over 1, which is 15. So we can say f of f6 is going to give us d. Okay, there's your answer to part a of this question. Now for part b, it says find the inverse of f. So we've got to find the inverse function. Okay, now they've told us that x is an element of the real numbers and they've given us its domain of the original function. Okay, so very important. We have to understand that we should always, when, we find, when we're finding the inverse function, they don't all, only want us to find the, an algebraic expression for the inverse. If they say find the inverse function, you must always find the inverse function and state its domain. That's part of finding the inverse function. Now, many questions, especially in Cambridge, they would say find an expression for the inverse function which means they don't, you know, they're not requiring you to write down the domain of the inverse function. But if they say find the inverse function and they don't mention anything else, they don't say find an expression for only or something like that, then you should also state the domain of the inverse function. Now to find the inverse function, the first thing you do is you write this as y equals. Okay, and this, by the way, don't get mixed up like some people do. This means the inverse function and this means the, the gradient function. They're not the same thing. So some people, they, they mix it up and they, they try to differentiate this when, it's, when they have to find the inverse or vice versa. They, they, they're, they're, they're supposed to differentiate and they find the inverse instead. So don't mix them up. Right? They're not the same thing. And the power minus one means inverse and dash means the gradient where you have to differentiate. Okay. So now we have to now, basically um, what we're going to do is we, we change f of x for y. And then what we do is, I, what I like to do at this stage is replace the x with y and replace the y with x. Okay, so the x, wherever you see x, you call it y. Wherever you see y, you call it x. And then we make y the subject of this formula. And that will give us the expression for our inverse. So to make y the subject here, what we need to do is get rid of the fraction first. So we're going to multiply both sides by y minus 4. Okay, so when you expand this, be careful, that's x, y minus 4x xy minus 4x equals y plus 3 now what we must do is bring the y's on one side of the equation together okay so what we can do here is we can say um, x y minus y equals add 4x to both sides you can say 4x plus 3 or 3 plus 4x same thing now we want one y term so we're going to take this y as a factor we have x minus 1 inside the bracket equals 4x plus 3 and now we can divide both sides by x minus 1 so we're left with y equals 4x plus 3 over x minus 1 so now we can say the inverse function is going to be of this form then 
inverse function is going to be of the form 4x plus 3 over x minus 1. Now, that would be the answer if you said find an expression for the inverse function. However, it doesn't say it doesn't say that it says just find the inverse function, which means we must state its domain. All right, so we can say x is an element of the real numbers, okay? Because this the original function had all real numbers as its, okay? Therefore, its range would be all real numbers apart from the asymptote, okay? The which will we can work out is going to be a y equals one. I'll explain that in a minute for those who don't understand. So the inverse function. It will also have all real numbers as its domain, okay? But you can see that there's one value of x it can't take. The inverse function, if you draw this, when x equals 1, it'll have an asymptote. As I mentioned, x equals 1 was the asymptote for this, uh, for, the vert for the range, okay? And that happens to be the asymptote for the domain of this, okay? So um, that's something that you should realize that the, the domain of the inverse function is a range so if i want to find the range of this it will be it will be equal to that the range of this function is going to be that the vertical asymptote for this is going to be sorry the horizontal asymptote for this is going to be x equals four okay now we don't have to go into that detail in this particular question all right but many students ask me this question um, you know how do i know that a certain number is the vertical or horizontal asymptote you know from these equations okay now if it's a simple one like this basically if you divide the um, coefficients of x that will give you the horizontal um, asymptote here the horizontal asymptote is going to be x uh, y equals one when you divide these you get one and if you divide these you're going to get four y equals four as your horizontal asymptote okay and as you can see that makes sense for this because the the the, the domain of this is the range of that and vice versa okay so you can see that um, x equals four would be the uh, horizontal uh, the the horizontal asymptote of this, which and is the vertical asymptote of the original function, and so on. But anyway, we can go into that in more detail, maybe in another question. But here we must state this that the x is an element of real numbers, and x cannot equal one. Not x equal x cannot equal one. Okay, that's the asymptote. All right? Why? Because this makes this denominator zero, so that must be taken out of the domain. Right? Because this was you know, unrestricted apart from the value it can't take, right? This is also unrestricted, right? Because it's a type of function. This would be a type of function that has, it will look like this. Okay, it will look something like this. It will go on forever both ways. When when x is zero, y is going to be negative three quarters. So we're going to go down something like this. Okay, it will look something like that, this graph. Okay. Um, that would be uh, y equals 1, and that would be x equals 4. That's how this graph would look, all right? So because the, domain, the, the, the range of this can go up to infinity and down to negative infinity, it just it can't, equals y, can't equals 1, then that would be the same as the domain of the, this one. The range of that is the domain of this one. All right, so that, those last parts are a bit of a side point in this particular question. Okay, but we should still understand how to find the domain and range of these functions. Okay, so we must state this because this is, is unrestricted apart from the uh, asymptote. This will be unrestricted apart from the asymptote as well. All right, so now that's part B done. Now we're going to go into part C. Okay, now for two part C, it says a function G is defined by G of X equals X squared plus five where x is an element of the real numbers and x is greater than zero. Now, this stuff here is not there for decoration purposes. This stuff here does affect, in many cases, our answer. And in this question, it definitely will as well. So don't just ignore this stuff that's written next to the function. In the last question, it didn't really affect much in terms of our answers, but sometimes it does. In this case, especially the, there's... This function is restricted for x values as positive. That means that you're not allowed to put anything in here which is 0 or less than 0. Whatever goes in here for x must be positive. Must be positive. Any real number that's positive. It can't be 0, it can't be negative numbers. And that's a very important issue when it comes to a question like this. So it says find the exact value of a for which g f of a equals 7. So what we've understood from here is this a must be a positive value because, uh, not this a, this 
the output of f of a because what this means what the, what does this mean this means you take a you put it inside function f and then you take the output of f a and you put it inside function f. that's what it means a goes into f goes into g okay so the output of f a which goes into g the output of f a must be positive so we know here therefore that f a has to be greater than zero it must be greater than zero why because the output of a f a go, goes into function g okay so when you put a into f what comes out has to be a positive value that goes into function g if it's a negative value you can't put it into function g okay so that's very important in the beginning to understand that so now let's go on and deal with this question it says g f of a equals seven so let's set this up so that means you've got to put a into function f. So basically function f a is the same as just replacing the x with a. So it's a plus 3 over a minus 4. But you've got to put that in function g. So you've got to take g and you've got to put inside function g f a. All right. Which is basically you've got to take f a. You've got to square it. And you've got to add 5 to it. Okay. And that will give you an expression for f, g, f of a. So what we can do is we can just do this in one step. Now we, we know that we have to equate that to 7. Um, equate that to 7, right? So this is g, f of a. That has to equal to 7. So you've got f, a, which is a plus 3 over a minus 4. a plus 3 over a minus 4. Okay, that's your function f, a. We have to square that. We have to add 5 to that, and we have to equate it to 7. We've got to solve this for a. All right? So let's now um, expand this. Now, remember, we have a bracket like a over b fraction all squared. You can square the numerator and the denominator separately. That's one of the laws that we learned earlier on. So now we have a plus 3 squared over a minus 4 squared. And I'll just subtract 5 from both sides equals 2. Now, for us from here, there's two ways we can proceed. I could take the square root of both sides and put this as plus or minus root 2 and then proceed and then use some um, you know, manipulation of thirds and get the answer. That might be easier, okay? but I'm going to start with the more familiar route that most of you would do, which would be to just um, you know, expand these brackets. So first of all, you would write it as a plus 3 squared equals 2 times a minus 4 squared. Okay, so now we can find what a plus 3 squared is. We know that's a squared plus 6a plus 9. Square the first term, multiply these together, double it, and then square the last term. This will be two times the same kind of issue, a squared. Multiply these together and double it, that's minus a to a. And square the last term. Now when you square something negative, it becomes positive, it becomes 16. So we have a squared plus 6a plus 9 equals 2a squared minus 16a plus 32. Now what we can do is we can um, make it say equal zero so we can try to solve this um, using quadratic methods. So we're going to make it equal say zero. So 2a squared minus a squared is a squared. Six, minus 16a minus another 6a is minus 22a. And 32 minus 9 is plus, 30, plus 23. Okay, now can you factorize this? Mm. Now, 23 and 1 would be a combination, but they have to have the same sign. So that should say 24 if you want to factorize it. So no, it won't work to factorize. So we can use the, the quadratic formula. We could complete the square. Complete the square seems about, it's going to be a bit easy here. So I'll write it like this first. I'm going to subtract 23 from both sides. And write this as a squared minus 22a. I'm going to complete the square for this. So I have a, I have a minus, I take a half of the coefficient, that's 11. If I expand, if I square that bracket, if I expand that, I'm going to get a squared minus 22a, but then I'll have a plus 121, which I don't want. You're going to take away the 121 from both sides. And now I can add 121 to both sides. So I have a minus 11 squared is equal to minus 23 plus 121. Let's find out what that is. Minus 23 plus 121. That should be minus 23. That gives us 98. So that's 98. So now we can find the square root of both sides. A plus A minus 11 squared equals the square root plus or minus of 98. That looks like it's going to be it's going to be 49, 7 root 2, I think. Square root of answer 
yeah, 7 root 2. So a minus 11 is equal to plus or minus 7 root 2. So our two values of, of possible values of a are 11 plus 7 root 2 and a equals 11 minus 7 root 2. Now, are they both solutions? Well, if we go back to what we discussed earlier, we know that this must be true. fa must be greater than 0. So let me just take this and see what happens with these values of a. Will these values of a uh, fulfill the condition that f, we know that fa has to be greater than 0. That's one condition. If it isn't, then we can't accept it as a value because it couldn't have gone into the function in the first place. Right? It couldn't be put, the, the output of fa could not go into g. So we've got to go back and check now. So let's see. So f11 uh, plus 7 root 2, that's going to be um, 11 plus 7 root 2 plus 3 over 11 plus 7 root 2 minus 4. That's going to give you 14 plus 7 root 2 over, and that's going to be um, 11 minus 4, which is going to be um, 7 plus 7 root 2. All right, that's going to definitely be positive, right? That's no problem. So that's one answer for sure. Is the other one an answer? Let's see. Minus 7 root 2. So we have 11 minus 7 root 2 plus 3 which is 14 minus 7 root 2 over, and we have 11 minus 7 root 2 minus 4, which is going to be 11 minus 4, which is 7 minus 7 root 2. Now, this is definitely going to be negative, and this is going to be positive. Let's see what that gives us. It looks like it's not going to give us um, what we need. This is definitely positive because you've got adding all things here, but let's have a look. 14 minus 7 root 2 divided by 7 minus 7 root 2. That's going to give you a negative value, negative root 2. Okay, so therefore we can see that, okay, um, you know, f11 minus 7 root 2 is less than 0. Therefore, this is not a solution. Okay, the solution is only this. Because the, this output of this, this value of a causes the output of the function f to be negative, which is something which does not belong to the domain of g. So that's a very important point there. Okay, I know these questions are, very, are not worth that many marks for that kind of thinking, but you should understand this point. It's very important. Why did they reject this point? Because the output of function a has to be positive for for it to be able to go into function g in the first place. All right, so there's the answer to question number two. I hope that was clear. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear at the top of the screen at the end of the video. Other questions from the topic of functions and uh, domain and range and these kind of issues can be found in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link and you can watch the video up here which will tell you how to use my channel to find things that you might be looking for. Thank you for watching and see you soon.